Hi guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing really, really well. Um, so I am here today working on Holly, who is the most beautiful, like, white golden Labrador. I think she was quite golden when she was younger, but as she got older, she was definitely going a bit uh, whiter. Um, unfortunately, she passed away at the end of last year, so this is a really, really special uh, portrait for her owner. He commissioned this at probably at the end of last year, um, and I've just been working on her over, like, the last couple of um, days. Um, whilst I, well, actually, I started her probably about um, a couple of weeks ago now, but I've been working on other things alongside her. Um, but yeah, she's just like got the most beautiful colours. So I'm using a lot of cold greys and sort of uh, like yellow, sort of ivory creamy tones. Um, her nose was really fun. I actually filmed her nose for Patreon if anyone is interested. That is um, currently live on Patreon. Well, it is live, not just currently, it is live on Patreon. Um, I will link my Patreon channel for live, uh, below if anyone is interested in seeing how I did that. But um, a little while back I actually went on Instagram and I asked for um, you guys to send me in some questions and like we can do a bit of a Q&A. Now I've had a bit of a social media hiatus, um, I took a bit of a break, I really needed to take a bit of a break from social media, it was getting a little bit too much um, and I was struggling a little bit with like, especially with everything going on like the protests, coronavirus, like Black Lives Matter, everything was just, every time I went online it was quite negative so I just need to, to, to remove myself from that for a bit. I feel loads better for it now. So um, that's where I've been. Um, I am back now. And yeah, I just wanted to, to film this little Q&A whilst I draw. And I hope that I can answer some of your questions. Um, I will be filming probably another one at some point. So if you are interested in asking me anything, or if there's anything you'd like to know, um, or any video suggestions and obviously feel free to pop them in the comments box below or, um, or just drop me a DM on Instagram or anything like that. But um, I won't ramble with an intro any longer, I'll just get straight in with the questions. I've got them all saved on my phone so um, yeah we can just go from there. So I'm not going to I'm not gonna go through and um, put everyone's names, like talk everyone's names, um, put, put everyone's name, talk about it. You know what I mean, um, say everyone's names because I don't want to butcher them, but um, yeah, so so someone says, I'm just going to go someone, um, anyway, what's the worst quality reference photo you'd work from, also your work stunning, thank you so much, so the worst quality reference photo I'd probably work from is um, something like this one actually, um, it's not bad, I'll try and like, hang on, like, it's, it's detailed but it's not like, it's not massively detailed. I can zoom and I pick out all the detail, but it's, you know, there's not a lot of um, sh like finite detail in her eye or anything like that. So um, that is probably like the worst. I just, when I'm looking at reference photos, I need to make sure that I can see everything super clearly. I want to get all of the eye details. I want to get all the nose details. No matter what animal it is, I want to be able to see sort of like the fur direction around the eye. I want to get all the contours of the nose. I just want, you know, if it's too blurry, I won't accept the commission. Just because I'm, I think that I won't be able to do the animal um, justice and therefore you know if, if the owner's paying quite a lot of money then obviously they're going to want a good representation of their animal for that and I really want to be able to deliver that so um yeah I don't accept anything that's sort of like less quality than this this was actually a photograph that I scanned um and I tried to scan it like a stupidly high res to try and get like there was as much detail as possible and it's working I mean I can work from it um, but it is nice to be able to work from a really, really high-res photo. Um, is there one thing you don't like about drawing? Um, the one thing I don't like about drawing is how long they take. These drawings take forever. I actually worked on a, um, a tutorial for July for Patreon um, the other day, and it is, in fact, I've got it here, it is this eye um, drawing and it took me all day and it's had about eight hours no I think it was about six and a half to seven hours this took um so they take a long long time now obviously colored pencil is like the slowest medium and you've got to be prepared to put in a lot of graft especially when you're working on a surface like Fabriano um I've just filmed a, a 
like a video all about me trying pastel matte paper with colour pencil and it is a lot quicker but I really really didn't like the overall effect like effect and, and how the pencil layered on pastel matte. I didn't I really didn't like it. I found it very, very difficult to work with. Um and I just yeah, I just wasn't a fan. So um I the one thing I don't like about drawing is how long they take. Um yeah, I think that's probably all I've got to say about that. Um Top five tips for artists starting out. Um, right, hang on. Let me think about five. The one thing I would say is, like, the most important thing is you've got to be patient. Nothing happens overnight. No successful business happens overnight. You have got to be patient. You've got to create your portfolio. You need people to be able to come to you, you know, whether it's on social media or a website or something like that. And they've got to be able to sort of see that you're here for the long run. You're not just a one-trick pony. You are going to be... Um, doing what you're doing for the long for the long run and um, so they you know they can build a rapport they build a trust a lot of times when people commission you it's because they've watched you grow and they've watched you progress over like the last couple of months or years even um, and they have developed like a trust in you so now they want to commission you it's very unlikely or very unusual especially when you're charging quite a lot of money for someone just to come to you because they've seen your work once um, so you just got to be patient you've got to practice your talent and your skill and you've got to really sort of make sure you can continually continually deliver um, so yeah practice and patience um, I don't know whether I've got like five top tips for people starting out um, build your audience build your you know whether it's on social media whether it's uh, in a website with a website whether you want to do like market trade stores um, you know you just got to show up and um, commit be committed so that's another thing you can't just um, decide one day you want to be an artist and the next day you don't want to do it anymore if this is career choice you want to do it's going to be a hard road and it's going to be a lot of graft um, but it's definitely you know it's, it can definitely work for some people if you um, well, it can work for anyone if you put in the graft and put in the work. Um, and you can definitely make quite a successful business out of it too. Um, so they will be like my top tips for someone starting out. Um, would love to hear your planning process uh, all around your commissions and prints, etc. Um, I'll be honest, I don't really plan. I kind of just roll with the punches, which is probably where um, I've gone wrong a bit before. Now, f ever since I started doing Patreon, especially as I'm trying to up my Patreon game at the moment um, and deliver as much content on there as possible and like beginner tutorials and all kinds of different stuff, um, I will be putting, um, trying to make like a social media schedule. Now, obviously a couple of months ago I had a full diary of commissions um, up until Christmas and because of coronavirus I have had a couple of cancellations now I've been battling in my head whether to allow those spaces to get filled up again because now the economy is starting to move I haven't you know I am um, have had people interested in commissions and it's something that I am contemplating filling up those spaces again but then again I also just really want to focus on trying to build um, an online support for on like YouTube and Patreon and things like that because it's um, being completely honest obviously your commissions are one thing and it's a one source of income but um, I need to um, when you know when you're running your own business you can't just rely on one source of income you need several different income streams and obviously YouTube and Patreon um, YouTube at the moment is sort of gives me X amount of revenue each month which is you know obviously I haven't posted anything on here for a while so um you know it's not exactly doing that well at the moment but obviously and there's Patreon which is um, sort of ste like steadily growing as well um and obviously so uh, but I need to keep like the momentum and you need to keep posting videos um so I, I don't know whether I'm gonna sort of continue to try and sort of grow or take on more and more commissions or whether it's just to take like one or two commissions a month um and then and to dedicate the rest of the time to patreon which is probably that's how i'm thinking i mean sort of deliver as much content on there as i possibly can and grow that i think that's like where my head's at at the moment um but that means that it's going to take me quite a lot of um time to grow um you know, I've got to have a steady plan. I've got to know what I'm drawing each month, what I'm planning each month, and you know what commissions I can film, what I can't film, and things like that. So, I think sooner I'm going to have to have more of a 
you know, a, a game plan for stuff like this. Um, but I haven't had one up until now. I kind of just work, I know what commissions are deadline for when, and I just work to those deadlines. Um, and then I fit every, like anything else in, in between. But I think for, instead of taking more and more, as I said, more and more commissions on, or um, dedicating any free time I have to um, drawing, um, the wildlife. I think I'm going to draw the wildlife, but I'm also going to try and film it for and create like Patreon and videos and on more bit like a few more YouTube videos and things like that. So no, I don't really have a process at the moment, but when I do, I will let you know what it is. What type of paper slash illustration board do you use for your art? I use Fabriano Artistico Hot Press Watercolour Paper. It is the heaviest weight, it is 640 GSM, 300 pound in weight, and I love it. It's not for everyone, I know some people really don't like it, but it's what I've used for like about five years now, and yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. I, I, you know, it gives me the results that I want, which is the main thing, um, and it's, yeah, it's really great for what I need it for. Um, do you spray your portraits with some sort of protective coating? I don't because I don't feel like it, they need it. Um, I feel like sometimes, I've tried it before when I first started, um, and it could definitely ruin some of the hard work and sort of it ruins some of the pigment. Um, it just, it washes it out and yeah, I wouldn't recommend fixing, like uh, using a fixative or spray or anything like that because I really, really don't think that um, these portraits need it. Um, the paper, because it's quite toothy, it takes the paper in, sorry, it takes the pencils, it takes the layers, um, and you don't really need any anything else to go with, um, to go with it, um, so no, no I don't. Um, Favourite thing on Netflix? Um, I... Well, I don't really have a favourite thing on Netflix at the moment. Obviously, Netflix have been bringing out a lot of new stuff since coronavirus. Um, I actually watched Mamma Mia, the second Mamma Mia, for the first time the other night. That was quite interesting. It was quite a feel-good film. Um, but in terms of like, documentaries and stuff, I was actually watching... Last night, I was watching um, Athlete A as I was editing my Patreon video, um, which was quite an interesting documentary about gymnasts and the USA and basically all these kids gymnasts who have had like, a really tough time. I won't tell you too much. I'm not going to go into it but that was quite an interesting um, um, like documentary thing to watch um, it's quite harrowing and it's quite it's really really it's not yeah it's just you don't really think that things like that would happen but they do happen and yeah it's just not nice so hopefully those girls have got some justice now um, so I, yeah I was quite enjoying watching that but I haven't really been watching an awful lot of Netflix whilst I've been working I've been watching and I watched um, something on iPlay uh, the other day which is if you're not in the UK, you probably won't have iPlayer. Well, no, actually, I think you can get it abroad. Um, it was about the Salisbury poisonings, which happened in 2018. Um, and they were... That was just up the road from me. So that was quite quite close to home. And I really like the way they portrayed that. That was good, quite a good sort of, like... Um, I don't know, what, what's it called when it's like a documentary but also like a drama, like a drama doc, I don't know. Um, I think I'm making words up now, but yeah, that was quite a good one. So I watched that, um, but yeah, I've been listening to a lot of audiobooks. I've been really, really obsessed with audiobooks recently, so that is what I've been like spending my time watching and doing and, and sort of, that's, yeah, that's about it really. I haven't really been doing an awful lot else with anything. Um... Uh, tips for doing fur on horses layers as you'll see right now i am just building up my layers so so slowly um, i'm using a multitude of different pencils i'm making sure i put a base layer down and then i'm going in with um different colors over the top of each other and then going in with sort of like my final detail layers when i've put enough pigment down on the paper um the like the thing that I think where people sometimes go wrong with colour pencil is they just don't put enough layers down. If you're using a thick heavy paper like this and you put layers down and then you blend um, with like a burnished layer to smooth out all the colours underneath and then you can go in with sort of like the fine detail um, layers like I am now. And um, yeah, that is definitely how I draw fur. Um, it's very similar to what I'm doing right now. Um, I'm just building up layers very, very slowly. Um, I've got to try and make 
round her nose a bit more like a ready kind of tone I think Biggest tips for running an arty business on social media, you've got to be patient. You've really, really got to be patient. Nothing, as I keep saying, nothing happens overnight. You've got to really, really work at it. It took me years to build up a quite decent following on social media. And um, it's interesting because I said a little while ago, I was like, I don't really know whether it matters whether you post it regularly or not. It definitely does. I didn't post for three weeks recently and I lost probably, I lost a lot of followers and... Um, I don't know, you know, whether people just think you're never going to come back or what the situation is, but yeah, um, you got to post regularly, post good, it's good quality stuff. You got to keep it you know, like fresh. I won't post more than a couple of times of the same drawing without putting like a filler photo or a filler post in, whether it's like a time lapse or whether it's something completely irrelevant or whether it's a throwback or something like that. I won't just post regularly like every single day the same drawing um because i feel like people can get a little bit bored of that um yeah so and just be engaging try and be engaging try and, and sort of engage with your followers ask them questions see what they want to see um keep them interested in you really and build up that trust um what is an age to draw as realistically as you can draw? I don't think there's an age. Um, you've just got to practice. Uh, I know, you know there is um, people that I know who are a lot younger than me who are fantastic artists. Um, and, yeah, you, there's no sort of right and wrong age to this at all. You just, you know, if you, if you enjoy drawing, you've just got to practice and practice and practice and um, see where it can take you. Have you ever painted with watercolours? Um, I have. Do you know what? I did a one a little while back. I was I was feeling very adventurous, and I will grab it for you in a second. Now, this is what I did. Um, you'll see. I haven't shared it on social media because I wasn't overly overly whelmed, like overwhelmed with it. I wish I hadn't done these two bits. I think it would have been alright without these two bits, but um. Yeah, this is why I attempt at watercolour. This is watercolour and ink, um, and it was very scribbly. I had loads and loads of fun creating this. Um, I really, really loved sort of like trying to work with different mediums, and yeah, I wish I hadn't put these little like drippy bits because I don't feel like I needed it, but I think I just got carried away. But yeah, these I think these took like a couple of hours to do in an afternoon, so it was really nice to jump on and do something like a lot looser and a lot sort of less in depth and what I'm currently working on at the moment but me and watercolours aren't friends we don't really get on um but yeah this is quite fun to do um do you ever feel like you're not good enough or worried about what others think of your work um yeah sometimes hence why I didn't come on here for like um the longest time um sometimes things just get a little bit too much um i've had quite a lot of people who have tried to take some ideas from me recently i feel like i get carried away on here and uh, other platforms and i share a bit too much sometimes and all of a sudden you know i've had people who have said oh this is very similar to what you've done and um which i guess is like a massive compliment that people you know think highly enough of of my ideas to take them for their own so um in that sense then yeah sometimes I do feel, I feel like you know I'm doing okay then other days there's you know I'll get like an imposter syndrome and I find it really really hard to come online and, and really sort of share what I'm doing and share my process and things like that but um you know you just gotta take a deep breath and try and get on and do it but yeah so I think I just get I get not really imposter syndrome I get like perfection paralysis I just get too scared to sometimes come on here and really sort of make a make a post or do a video or something but I just need to get over that um it's just something that I struggle with sometimes but yeah um so I think it happens less nowadays but when I first started I was like I just didn't feel like what I was bringing to the tables was good enough so I really had to take some time out to really sort of work on my skill um, and come back stronger and that's sometimes what you've got to do like I've taken a little bit of time off recently and I feel a lot better coming back to this now I feel a lot more confident and like with my um 
abilities of film and put video content out and do Patreon and things like that. So, but sometimes I just need a little bit of sort of like a um, a refresh and a little bit of like press the pause button and come back and just see how you feel after you've done that. That's exactly what I've done recently, and yeah, it definitely pays off. Definitely, definitely helps. Um, Where do you get your drawings scanned, basically your print process and start to finish? Um, I've shared it on here actually, um, I do everything myself now, unless it's like really large format printing. Um, I print everything, I've got the Epson Shaw Colour P800 printer and I've got an Epson Perfection V600 scanner. Um, and yeah, they both work really well together, I just edit everything in Photoshop that needs to be edited, I scan it all in and print it out on my paper. Um, which was obviously like a fine art paper, I used up a set of velvet um, and yeah so far so good, I've been doing my own prints for about a year now and um, really really enjoy the process, I really like being able to keep everything in what, like under one roof and keep everything and that means I've got control of you know the print stock and yeah, I, I can. I, I'm not outsourcing any of it which in a way it's like it's a bit harder because obviously you're trying to manage everything yourself but um, I'm a bit of a control freak and I really really enjoy sort of having that power um, so yeah I am um, I, that's how I, I do think I'll finish the drawing I'll scan it um, edit it in Photoshop and then proof it and then print it on my printer and um, which is obviously yeah it's a fine art printer um, when you first started, did it take a while to get a steady stream of commissions? Um, no, it didn't really, because basically when I first started, I was charging, I think, like £10, £20. Um, and I was just advertising it to friends and family on Facebook. And then I created a business page. And then the more con like the more interest I got um, the, and in art and the more, interest, uh, the more interest my work got, then I managed to sort of get more... Um, clients and more commissions and the busier I got the more I can up my prices and then I went away and sort of really worked on my skill really worked on trying to be trying to bring as much um, professionalism to the business as I possibly could and that's when I started I decided to go self-employed and really try and make this work as a as a career um, so yeah I mean I started very very small and it's taken about five years to grow to where it is now and now oh, I do have a steady stream of commissions um, which is great but um, yeah you just got to start small and even if you're dreaming big start small um, I actually did a I keep banging on about it I know but I my business video for this month on Patreon was um, how to start your creative art business and I literally covered everything on there everything you needed to know or you need to know and I've also written a like printable pdf um, file so you can sort of like follow along and take notes and sort of like keep pointers and things like that so if you're interested as I said I'll link it down below and then you can sort of go and read it and watch it at your own leisure and it's for the business, my business patrons um, which is the £10 a month tier um, How do you have so much patience? Have you always been so patient drawing? Um, it's funny because I'm not actually patient with many other things um, I get really annoyed very easily at different things and different people but when it comes to art I have got all the time in the world to sit here and draw I think it's because I find it really really therapeutic and it's the one thing that really keeps me calm um, and I will always I'm really really lucky I, I never really really have off days from drawing I always want to draw I always want to get up and I think it's different when you it is your work because you don't really have a choice you've got to get up and you've got to draw every single day um, because obviously you've got bills to pay and you know as I said I'm trying to save for a house at the moment and trying to get on the property ladder in the next couple of months so I really really need to um, keep drawing but no um, I really really enjoy the process I really love um, working with clients I really love working with who I work with so it does make a massive difference um, to work with sort of some really really lovely people um, and I get to meet a lot of clients as well and it just yeah I think because because um, I do get to see and meet a lot of the people I work with. It brings it closer to home. I'm not just sort of an online artist. I'm sort of doing more and more 
with different people these days as well. So yeah. Um, artificial light or natural light, which is better? Now, I know some people that use artificial light and they get, you know, they they work mostly at night and um, they they find it really really like, easy. I personally can't do it. I've got to work during the day. I will use my evening time for editing, for packaging, and um, for doing things that I can't do when I'm obviously when it's daylight and I want to be drawing. Um, but yeah, that's my, just my personal preference. And um, just, I mean, you can get really, really good daylight lamps. I've got a, a, the daylight lamp. I think it's called Easy Re um, Easy Reader, and it's you know it's a really, really good daylight lamp. But personally, I just really, really struggle to um, to use it for um, for work. Um, I would much rather do everything I need to do. Um, drawing wise during the day when it's daylight when when I'm using the sort of daylight um, I'm just drawing out and wanted to draw my daughter's black lab what colours do you use for a black um, I use a lot of warm and cold greys it just depends you can use paint grey you can use a uh, dark sepia um, there's a lot of hidden colours in black I really without seeing a reference photo it's really really hard to give you a, um, a really good clear sort of indication but there's a lot of hidden sort of blues and purples and sometimes in, like even reds in a black coat just and which will make it look um, less flat if you just use one color or just like black or um or only just greys and things like that then it can look a little bit flat so it's often worth putting in chucking in some like secret colors so to speak um because it will make a massive massive difference to the overall um effect of your drawing um what's your earliest memory of drawing and the first drawing you remember doing and was happy with um i remember being on a holiday with my family when i was about nine or ten um, every year my parents used to give us like a journal like a diary thing um to finish like to fill in each day when we're on holiday well hang on we're actually going to die yeah, so my parents used to give us, me and my brother, a um, like a, a journal diary thing to fill in, and each day we had to like write um, what we got up to that day and whether you know um, what we did. And I always used to draw loads and loads of pictures um, instead of writing. I used to write a couple of lines and draw. Like if I'd gone on a surfboard or gone um, to a market, I always used to draw the scene. Um, so that was like probably my one of my earliest memories of drawing. Um, or actually when I was really really young at my childminders um, I used to try and draw the TY um, to cuddly toys that she used to have um, so and then the first drawing that I remember being really happy with um, I don't know it's really really hard um, there's a lot of drawings that I'm quite proud of um, even to this day um, but the first drawing I remember being really really proud of it would probably be Allegro when I did that because um, I felt like you know it got spotted by Team GB. Charlotte um, saw it and um, she obviously invited me up to the yard and I've worked with her ever since, which is an incredible achievement. Um, and I think that was like the mem like that put me on in the papers and on the um, on the radio and got um, a lot of. Um, response online so I'm thinking I think that was probably like my first memory of like one of the pieces that have been a massive success which is great um Do you listen to music whilst you work? I think I've covered this. No, I don't really. I always listen to like podcasts or audiobooks. Like I'm obsessed with Audible. I um I have like too many books in that library. Um, but yeah, I really really enjoy. That's like one thing I really really love listening to is audiobooks when I'm working. I just love getting lost into a storyline or something like that when I'm working. Um, I used to watch a lot of films and Netflix and things like that, but I'd rather. I thought if I can educate myself or just try and like listen to a book or something, then um, that is what I'd rather do at the moment, and um, just to get me, yeah, just to educate myself really. Um, and I, yeah, I always used to like reading, so that was massive. 
that's like a thing that I really enjoy doing. Um, Right, how do you handle clients sending you terrible dark blurry reference photos? Um, if the client doesn't send me a good enough reference photo, I will never accept the commission. And I've made that, at first I was like, you know, it's hard because you don't want to turn down work and you also don't want to turn down clients. And I know it's like a really hard battle because when you're first starting out as well, you know, you, you don't want to give people the, um, you know, you don't, you don't, I never like turning people down, um, but sometimes, you know people will appreciate it if you if they um you know hang on i can't remember get my words out if you can't if you don't think that you can provide a good enough service for the money you're charging for the reference photo people will appreciate your honesty and then you never know they might come back with um you know i've, I've let people down quite recently and said look your photos aren't good enough and they've come back with really really good photographs um, and they were like, oh, I've just found this, and I didn't realise I still had it, blah, blah, blah. So, you know, just be honest with people. Just be honest, and um, just try and, you know, um, people won't be mad at you um, for not being able to accept commissions. They'd rather get, sort of, like, your, your best out of it, and if you feel like the reference photo isn't good enough, don't take the work on if you don't feel like you can deliver it because it's your reputation at the end of the day. Um, how do you keep yourself motivated to do art and create in this crazy time? Um, I don't really have a choice, it's my job. <laughs> um, no, I, obviously that's a bit of a joke, but well, it is and it isn't. I mean, I obviously absolutely love what I do and I wouldn't do it if I didn't love doing it, but um, yeah, it is, it is different when it is your full-time job and you've got bills to pay and you've got, like, you're trying to get a mortgage and things like that. Um, I'm working as hard as I can to create the money that I need to make to get and be able to get on the property ladder and things like that. So, yeah, it's different when, um, obviously, it's your job. But as I've always spoken to people about and said, like, um, you know, don't ever put too much pressure on yourself if you're starting out and you're worried that you won't be able to make enough money to meet your needs each month and just go and get a part-time job. Just go work in the co-op, work in, a, in your local convenience store or go to the pub and work at the pub. Do whatever you want to do or you know, keep your day job but just do this in the evenings. You know, just don't put yourself out and don't put, make it too stressful for you to manage. Um, but yeah, I mean, I obviously really like what I do and... Um, I don't really struggle with motivation. Even when I'm not posting online, I'll always be drawing behind the scenes. There's never really a day when I don't draw. So, um, yeah. Um, do you love cows? <laughs> yeah, I really, really do. Um, you've probably seen it all over my Instagram and all over my YouTube. I, I have a slight obsession with cows. I think they are like, the most wonderful creatures ever. They're so, so just curious and funny. And yeah, I really, really enjoy spending time with them they um they are definitely make me very very happy um just kind of pop in this really dark area here and then blend it out blend the spits out um do you have a boyfriend or any other hobbies or is art the only thing you give your time to um no art isn't the only thing i give my time to um it, it is very it does take up a lot of my time, as with any business does. Um, but I'm really, really fortunate because, yeah, my boyfriend, he um, lives in a really, really beautiful part of um, the UK. And there's a lot of um, really, really amazing reference photos and sort of animals and wildlife near him. So I'm really, really lucky that sometimes I can take my work over to his and work from his. And so I don't really ever feel the need to... Um, you know, I don't, art isn't the only thing I give my time to, but it's, it's because I can make it work in with my other commitments, if that makes sense. So, you know, um, we, me and him can go out for the day or go for, on a bike ride and stuff like that. And, you know, I get loads and tons of inspiration from like foals and forest or like, um, you know, different things that we'll see and different things that we'll do. Um, and then like, because I can work from his, it means I get to spend time with him and also like, carry on creating my work but it's really great because he's really super supportive of what I do as well so it really does make a difference and you know you've got to surround yourself with people who are really really encouraging and really want the best for you um and so you know he he's not artistic in the slightest but um yeah he's definitely he's definitely very encouraging of what I do and definitely wants the best 
for me and the business which is really really lovely so and yeah really really helps to surround yourself with really positive people um and but no art isn't the only thing that i do um i have do have a life outside of this even though obviously when you do have this as your business it does become your life um very much so um especially when you're first starting out but i'm just i'm at the stage now where i'm trying to create a bit more balance between um you know doing this for my work but also you're not making it my whole life because um yeah i don't want it to be my whole life i just want it to be my work really um instead of sort of like like last night for example i was so um trying i was trying to get up this patreon video and it was going up in four parts and um because at the moment i can only upload during the night because everyone needs the internet here during the day where we're all working from home and i can't upload um videos at my boyfriend's house because his internet where he lives in a really rural area is not great so i need to do it when i'm at home um so, but so it means i have to do it at night so i haven't I set myself an alarm last night and i was having to wake myself up every two hours to try and upload the next bit of the video so i could try and get them all uploaded overnight ready for like the first of july um but i didn't make it um i managed to export all the files every couple of hours but um they are currently still uploading well i managed to upload two so hopefully i'll upload the last two tonight and then they will all be live tomorrow but yeah that's not really how you want to be living your life is it setting your alarm every two hours on a wednesday night or a third tuesday night just to try and upload for patreon but um yeah that's what i'm having to do at the moment because it's like desperate times i need to get the content out there um but yeah it is very much my life at the moment um Do you always put a lighter layer, colour layers out first and then fill in the teeth of, fill in the teeth for adding colours and blend? Um, hang on, let me read that again to you because I've just got a notification coming through. Do you always put a lighter colour layer down first to fill the teeth of the paper for? before adding colours and blending yeah I do I always put a very like um a, a base layer down to fill the teeth of the paper before I go in with any other like heavier layers um just put you know I always work from my highlights back so what I'm essentially doing at the moment is I'm just trying to fill in some of the shadow areas so um and then you know this is looking very sort of um grainy not grainy but it's looking very sort of stringy and um, so I'll go in with other colours and blend that over the top and just make things as smooth as possible really I apply some different colours and I'll blend over the top and sort of burnish them out together um, and yeah that's what works for me um, trying to see whether I've covered everything um, Tips with de about dealing with clients. That's the last question. Tips about dealing with clients. Um, yeah, well, it depends who your client is. Um, but yeah, you just got to be honest with them. Keep them in, um, you know, keep them regular with updates. Keep them informed. Um, be very, very clear from the word go about your intentions and when your, your deadline and how you work and things like that. Just give them a very clear pricing structure. Give them, just, be, just be very transparent. Don't hide anything from them. Don't keep them updated. Keep them, um, be honest with them. Keep, you know, a good level of communication. Um, and yeah, just be, just be honest when you're struggling or you can't complete a deadline. Don't hide behind it. Just tell them, be honest. People always appreciate honesty rather than you hiding away so yeah but that was like the last little question i had for um my q a but i really hope you've enjoyed this video i know i've had a bit of a social media hiatus over the last couple of weeks um but hopefully i will be back i've got a lot of content planned so i will see you in the next one i really hope you enjoyed this um and yeah lots of love bye